Okay, FAQ number 13. I'm going to do a little bit more information on the Book of Enoch because there are some things that I didn't cover in the first video, uh, some things that I didn't say, uh, reasons why I reject the Book of Enoch. And um, the main reason I reject it, of course, is because it does not appear in the King James Bible, and the reference in Jude does not mention the Book of Enoch. Okay, I'm going to talk about that here as we continue. But it's, a, it's an extra-biblical book. It's just like the Apocrypha, and there's heresies all through the thing. Okay, and I'm going to show you a couple here in just a minute, just from just from opening up the thing and looking at it. It's ridiculous. But for this thing to be authentic, okay, let's just think about this thing logically for a minute. For this to actually have been a book that Enoch wrote, it would have had to have been written by Enoch, taken by Noah onto the, the, the ark, made through the flood, and then survived through all those years and everything else. And, you know, Many people believe that the first uh, uh, part of Genesis there was revealed to Moses. Actually, the whole book of Genesis was revealed to Moses, that God revealed it to him, and he wrote it down. You know, that there were no, it wasn't that Adam wrote things, and that, you know, uh, Abraham wrote some stuff of Genesis. God actually wrote it to, or gave it to Moses. You know, that's what most people believe. So, God didn't originally have those guys write Genesis, but Enoch wrote a book that is never mentioned in the Bible. But somehow it was taken on the ark and made it through the flood and, and was carried up through. Uh, that's very suspicious, especially when they, they claim that some of the oldest copies of this thing actually go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls and the, the cave at Qumran there or whatever, where there was you know a lot of weird other Gnostic type writings and things. And with this, these writings, you know, it, it, it's very, very shaky. You know, and most of the copies of this thing, this book of Enoch, came after the Bible. So, of course, it's not very difficult to write a book like this and to say, you know, in Jude, he says, God reveals this thing to him, what Enoch had said way back when, not that what Enoch had written down. I mean, you can't prove that from the verse there in Jude. Enoch prophesied. It doesn't say he wrote things down. He prophesied. I'm going to show you about that here in just a minute. But, you know... To, you know, Jude says Enoch prophesied of these things about you know, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And you just take that and you can say, well, I'll just put that into my book I'm writing here called the Book of Enoch and make it look like that Jude was actually quoting from the Book of Enoch. See, it's very deceptive, and I believe that that's what happened. And if there is some kind of a B.C. type of a thing here with Enoch or whatever, it was written by people that were messing around with spirits. I'm going to show you why I say that here in just a minute. But a uh, verse of scripture here, just to kind of illustrate my point, that it was not, I don't believe it was written down, what Jude wrote, I believe it was revealed to him. A similar thing occurs over here in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Timothy 3, verse 8 says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Those two magicians that were under, under Pharaoh, uh, you don't read their name in the Old Testament, but right there you do. Now, are we to believe that Moses wrote their names down and that that little piece of paper or whatever was passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down until Paul finally got a hold of it and said, you know what, I'm going to include this in my letter to Timothy? Of course not. God revealed it to, to Paul in that passage. Just the same way God revealed what Enoch said, what he spoke way back before the flood, he revealed what was spoken to Jude. It wasn't that he was reading, that Jude was reading from the book of Enoch. Okay, that's, that's nonsense. But let me just show you this thing here, this book of Enoch. You can see it here. I mean, I just, I literally just picked this thing up and just flipped it open and just started reading the other day. And I was just like, you know, I had a... I was waiting for something, and I thought, I'm just going to flip it open and see what I can see here. I didn't look this stuff up online or whatever else. And I just saw some of the stuff, and I thought, this is, this is absurd. Okay. Page 212 here. It has, uh, and on it, uh, he levitated, arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. Okay. <laughs> Here, here again, he levitated, arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth and blessed the Lord of heaven. 
Uh, so you get Enoch, and, and let me just say this too here, by the way, over here on this page. When he opened his eyes, he lit up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. It says it there, he was levitating, you know, and now his father Lamech was afraid of him and fled and came to his father Methuselah, and he said to him, I have begotten a strange son, different and unlike man, and resembling the sons of the God of heaven, and his nature is different, and he is not like us, and his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his face is glorious. Okay, I had to look that up for just a minute. Lamech, what this thing is, this nutty nonsense, this glowing baby that's levitating, that's actually supposed to be Noah. Okay, kind of weird too, because when you read uh, the Quran, where it talks about Jesus Christ being born, Jesus Christ was born, and he's already starting to speak as a newborn baby. Noah's doing the same thing. You know, and you, and you read some of this other nutty nonsense in this thing, and it's just like, there's all these weird numbers, and, and you know, like right here, let me show you this. Uh, before he appointed me to attend the, to the, the throne of glory, the Holy One blessed, blessed be he, sounds like the Islamic thing again, open to me, 300,000 gates of understanding, 300,000 gates of wisdom, 300,000, all this 300,000 stuff here, you know. Talking about this angel and the angels writing stuff down, you know, and all this, and and uh, and God's open to three, all these wild numbers and stuff like this. It it just sounds like the same spirit that that inspired the Quran. You know, this angel appears and he's got six hundred wings, like like Muhammad, I guess, was just sitting there going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, counting six hundred wings, and he's telling him all this wild stuff. I mean, I don't believe this stuff at all. Let me just show you another thing here. Chapter 11, God reveals all of the great mysteries to Metatron. Sounds like some kind of transformer or something here. Metatron, the angel, the prince of the presence. And here he talks about, he said to me, the Holy One, blessed be he. Again, it sounds like this Islamic thing, the Holy One. Because that's, it's interesting because the Roman Catholics, you know, uh, you know, they'll, they change the, the King James in many places, too. They'll say the Holy One, capital O. Some occult stuff going on there. Here, Metatron is given the omniscient power of God. Oh, really? Down here, God puts a crown on him and calls him the lesser, you know, Yahweh or whatever there, the YHWH, the, the lesser God there. And then again, you have the Holy One. So God takes an angel and gives an angel omniscience that he knows everything just like God and he's a lesser God. You're not dealing with a book that was written by saved people. You're dealing with a book that was inspired by devils. All right? And if you're reading this kind of junk, you better repent and get right with God because this is not scripture. This is dangerous. This is heresy.